Good morning, Rick, from um, not very far from you. I may be, I don't know, maybe 15 blocks from you. Good morning, Mark. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking up the street. I could probably see if you waved out the window. <laughs> there he no, is. No, you see, see me. Him. You see me. <laughs> What's up? What's up? It's the day after the big party, and I'm in honor of everybody coming to New York to celebrate my marriage with Frank, which was last August. Uh, I wore a New York hat today. Awesome. It's That's hard awesome. To, it's hard to tell because it's it's like tartan. It's um, plaid or whatever, but it says New York on it. It's very cool. We were on the street last night, of course, working the street, and we almost bought you a New York hat because uh, Jesse said... This party last night. I wanted to talk about the party, but Jesse said, "Oh, Mark needs a hat for this show. He needs a New York hat." I said, "Well, he's probably got a New York hat." And sure enough, you do. This is going to be fun because your sink just went way the hell off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything last week. It went off, or last time because I was talking bad about Fred Phillips or Phelps or whatever. Remember? It's funny. I'm not going to fix it because it looks really. It's like the Japanese movies where the lips <laughs> are like you know. So we'll just play it. We'll play it. Let's just, okay. <laughs> And we don't have your. You didn't bring your bell with you. Everybody, no. so everybody knows. Rick is in Shreve. We're Rick is from Shreveport. You're here, with your um, your main squeeze, Jesse. Your only squeeze, Jesse, to celebrate our party, <laughs> and um, it was fabulous. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but we, we you don't have a bell, so we're going to be doing this. Go. Perfect. Oh, every cafe needs a bell. Where do we? St oh, go. Where? Let's start about your party. I was going to start about. Porn and gay porn, but I don't think that's a great way to start one's morning. Let's talk about your party, Mark. It was fabulous. It was we didn't want we were gonna originally we were gonna have a wedding in May, which is a huge ordeal. Anybody who gets got married, like I mean, you can just do it very quietly, which is what we ended up doing. But you, if a wedding is like, oh my god, the planning and who do you invite and like half of my family, I know they're not. You know what I mean? It's just really complicated and very very expensive. So um, we got married um, quickly. We were It wasn't a sudden thing. Somebody yesterday said, oh, it's sudden. It wasn't sudden. We've been together seven and a half years. But uh, once, as soon as Doma fell, Frank and I said, time to get married. So we went to City Hall and got the license. And in New York, in New York State, you have to wait 24 hours. You can't just get your license and you're married. You wait 24 hours. It goes back to this Congress lady 80 years ago who thought everybody was getting drunk in New York City and getting married. So they instituted a waiting period, and um, anyways, you got to wait 24 hours. So I thought, well, we got to wait a day. Why not ask Reverend Pat, my favorite pastor, to, to, to sign the license? So we did a ceremony with just Reverend Pat, me and Frank, Michael Ellis, Jerry, and Sean, and they were all there yesterday. So it, that's how we got married. But And then it was like, well, if we're, why would you have a wedding nine months after you got married? So we said, Let, let's just have a party, and that's what we did. We yep. had a party. We did and in was, a New York minute, you had a party, man. You put that together, and it was fabulous. It was great. All all of our all of our close by peeps, you know. While well, you were you're from Louisiana, but some friends from from Delaware. But anyways, we didn't invite people who were going to have to get hotel rooms and all these logistics. It was a it was a party. It was a party. It was great. And there were some really great people. You know, we commented a lot of the people that were there were friends of ours from LGBTSR, our other show. By the way, we've got to open the cafe this morning. This is Cafe B. Welcome to the cafe. But yeah. a lot of those people we know as guests from our other show, you know, Amy Mays and um, Terry Clark and Rob Friedwitz and all that. And it was really cool because we were talking, Terry, Rob, and I at one point, we said, wow, we're like virtual friends first. Then we became like real friends and got to touch, feel, and, you know, uh, really get to know each other in person. But it's weird these days how sometimes your relationships can start on the internet and then move a different way. But. It was yeah. cool. Great. Congratulations. Wonderful. It, it was great. It turned out fabulous. And the mentalist, I really liked him. I gave him a five star review today on Gig Salad, which is where I found him. Gigsalad.com, where these you know magicians and what have you, you can find them. But anyway, he was just really, really nice. And I loved speaking to LGBT senior. Then we got to move on. I loved hiring an older man. He was. He had to be in his forties at least. And I really liked it that he wasn't a kid. There's a lot of great young magicians out there, but I liked. You know, putting the money where my heart is, which is at older people. It was great. And, you know, Mark was teasing for a long time. Folks, those of you watching, hello. Mark was teasing for a long time about entertainment. And I guessed magician, and I was just being way out of left field, Mark. And it was. I, but but I didn't more want you to say it too loud. Now, I have a question. I know that he made your dick disappear. Did you Have you found it? <laughs> Do you know what he did you. with it? No, I'm over 50. <laughs> I don't go looking for it at this hour. I wait until I need it. 
It's not a toy any longer. Can you ring the bell, please? please I will, but the- speaking of disappearing dicks, I've lost 16 pounds. I can see mine again, so. Perfect topic to talk about gay porn next, then. Of course, I want to talk a little bit about it because uh, it's kind of got me concerned. Well, two things here. First of all, let's talk about pornography. A study just came out saying that um, people spend only about 10 minutes on pornography now that it's on the internet versus having to take out your vhs tape that you had hit under your bed and having to plug it in and let it roll and all that stuff they say people can go to these sites like x what's it called x spot or x x tube or something you and you porn and all it takes is like 10 minutes and they're done you know that is if they found their dick then i read a study actually i, I heard about this study that more men in the south watch gay porn than any other category in the South watching, you know, it's like anywhere else in the country, it's the Southerners watching make more gay porn. Then I read a study, don't ask, I wasn't searching for porn on my internet because, you know, then it saves it as a cookie and you're kind of, or a donut and you're in trouble. But this is the interesting Mark. one, Mark. There's a guy named Michael Lucas here in New York City that is kind of the master, his studio, I think it's called Lucas Entertainment, does a lot of gay porn. And he is going against the rulings from 2012 that basically California passed a law that said you had to have condoms and protection in videos. He's saying, no, we're not going to do it anymore. We're going to go back to what, what they call in that community bareback videos, yeah. oh, which yeah. is unprotected sex. Yeah, and he, his reasoning is interesting, and, and I don't agree, but he was saying he has a – he's HIV negative, has an HIV positive boyfriend, and they practice unprotected sex because two things. Those that have HIV – those that are HIV negative can take that drug, and I forget what it's called, prevent or something. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So he's saying that's number one. So if they take it, it protects them from any kind of viral infection for that period of time. And number two, because of all the drugs that people are taking now that are HIV positive, the viral load is so low that it's probably indetectable and really can't be transmitted. So that's enough on the subject. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm just reporting the news. Take it for what it's worth, everybody. Kind of kind of a weird swing. Yes, and I'm not, uh, surpri- I'm not surprised at the, of the higher viewership. In the South, because so many things are, like teen pregnancies are highest in all of these red state countries where they don't, you know, they're so religious that, and they're all getting pregnant, you know, unmarried pregnancies. And it just all goes with the whole mindset of repression. And I'm not shocked. Okay. Hit the bell because you're going to speak to that subject now, Mark. You're from Mississippi. What happened in Mississippi? See, now you didn't know I was going to talk about that next. Well, kind of, we're talking about the South. Well, we got to keep it short because we, we're keeping, the, we got to do these under 15 now. We just have to. So I'm watching the clock. We're at 749. Um, Mississippi, my family, I got a big family from there, my birth family, because I was adopted. That's why I don't talk like I'm from Mississippi. But anyways, Mississippi went ahead and did what Arizona backed away from, which is passing a religious liberty bill. Religious liberty bill. Uh, they worded it very vaguely because they're trying to make sure it doesn't get overturned. But I said to Frank, we're not going back. I mean, I I'd love, I love, we like going there. I have nothing against Mississippi. I love Louisiana, Mississippi. I think they're much more interesting than Indiana where I grew up. But the thing is, I'm not taking my husband and my relationship to an estate, even if we weren't married. I'm not going to a state where I have to worry that something ha- – we already did that anyways, and we still do because they don't recognize our marriage. But now it's like – no, man, this, I'm not spending, I'm not putting money into an, we lost you, there you are. Um, I'm not putting money into an economy of a state where they can deny us services or, or hotel stays or whatever the hell. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. That's my only comment on that. And it's, it's sad, but it divides families. I wanted to say that too, because I'm not, I can't be the only one who's saying I'm not going to be seeing my family in Mississippi anymore until they get rid of this law. Now you I look agree. like a you look like a like a uh, impressionist painting. I just want you to I know. I'm glad it's changing, but I agree with you. Now, last night we had a lot of conversation with your friends off subject about it, or on subject, but away from you, behind your back, so to speak. Because it also makes me feel bad that it would separate you from your family. You know, in some ways you have to go above legalism and say that. But I'm with you because behind your back, I was also telling you we didn't have a chance to totally immerse in conversation yesterday because you were hosting after all. But I told Jesse and some other friends that I will not get married until. Gay or same sex marriage is approved in all 50 states until I live in a country where it's equal and I don't have to be state hopping. That's just my feeling. You know, a lot of your friends last night were married, some in Connecticut, some in New York, like yourself, but I'm not doing it until all 50 get it. So I see your point. Ring that bell. I'm digging the, the video. You're going to see what it looks like. You do, you know, you're like a watercolor. It's really, really interesting. Uh, beautiful. 
our audience is going to love it because they know that we're they know that we're like totally um, schoolyard. <laughs> schoolyard. Oh, on the subject, speaking of like the anti-gays that are out there in the chicken world, you know, you got your Whataburger or what's that company called that's like anti-gay that has chicken? Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A can't go there on Sunday because of course they're closed Sunday. They they're, they're going to do very well in Mississippi. I know they're already in Mississippi, but there is a chicken company called Leghorn Chicken that just opened its first location in the Ukrainian district of Chicago. And if you go, you got to go because they they vow to be socially aware, and they say that two percent of all their money when you go and buy your Chick Fil A or whatever you buy there, your Leghorn Chicken breast goes to gay causes, Mark. And they also have condoms with their logo on it, on the countertop. It's the first fast food place in America where you can go and get free condoms. That's it. Just free free condoms? Free. Oh, free, free condoms. Uh, free fruit condoms. And I bet, you that, well, they, I bet you they got a little grinder stand set up there, too. Yeah. yeah, probably. Instead of the touch and order, you can probably just go there. No, they're not gay-owned. They're not saying go out and get crazy with each other. They're saying... We support gay causes, and we support safe sex. That dude from uh, Michael Lucas won't be going there for a chicken breast. But he probably doesn't like breast anyway. No. No. Oh, man oh, breast. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Ring the bell. We got one last subject. <laughs> Mine, right? Yeah, but I, I'll see if I can work my way into yours. <laughs> okay. You and, got- then I, and then I want to mention that we got Raina coming on the pod, the other podcast, which is amazing. Awesome. By the way, everybody, Rick is a, I, I, what I, one of the things I love about you is that you're a scene stealer. I mean, everybody was going, I loved your friend Rick. He's so fun and blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a scene stealer. Okay, you're- <clears throat> Mozilla, Mozilla, all over the news. And in today's New York Times, Frank Bruni, who's a gay columnist. See, I didn't say openly gay. I'm going to shut up about that. But thank God we're getting past that. Gay columnist. And um. He wrote about Mozilla and the whole the the CEO there resigning after a couple of days, being pressured out because of, he had donated to Prop Eight. <clears throat> a lot of controversy over that. A lot of gay folks, not the major organizations, but lots of gay employees were like, "Oh, get rid of him!" And anyways, my, I'm on I'm on the side of Frank Bruni and even Andrew Sullivan, which is that I didn't want him to lose his job. I work in a really conservative, small but very conservative company, and um, I don't want to ever be have calls for my resignation or feel like I have to or get let alone get fired because I donate to a, a gay church or I do this or I do that and people say there's a difference but I don't think there is prop 8 is dead let's not relive prop 8 anymore please you know it's like let's go back to the 1964 civil rights act and the 26 democratic senators who voted against it prop 8's right. dead the fact that he gave a thousand dollars to them that's his freedom to do that and it has no impact on his job, and I totally think he should have stayed. And gay people need to get off of this shit, you know, like we're going to run everybody out of town now over over donations they made five years ago. It's crap, and he's, but he, anyways, he's gone, and that's my opinion. Mm. Well, speaking of being gone, David Letterman on his way out resigning. I want to swoop around to the subject, and then we can ring the bell and say goodbye, everyone. But Aisha Tyler! Aisha Tyler! I, I, Going for Chelsea Handler. She announced too. Apparently, she's been in talks with CBS to develop a show. I think they're kind of ousting the old man. Sorry to say it, Mark. I think they are. You want you want color. You want color TV. Not only that. Not only do I love Aisha Tyler. She's not going to be doing it, but she should because she's a star. She's funny. She's poised. She's. I love Aisha Tyler. Plus, she's frankly she's very she's very professional. Handler's a skank. I'm sorry. She's a skank. Oh my God, Mark McNeese. She is. She got up. She did the uh, the Grammys or something years ago, and she's just vulgar. There's no way they're gonna give her that show. And I know she's funny. A lot of people love her. I'm not a huge fan, but she's too vulgar, Frank. They're not gonna take that risk because they'll have to cancel it a month later when she says when she talks about her pussy. Well, maybe they may. I think she's smart and knows that she can go from a seven million dollar contract to a you know three times that contract. The network is run by women. I think they're supportive of her. Maybe they'll move Craig Ferguson in, and she'll come after him and be a little you know a little irreverent. I will say this though: if you're going to go all the way, like you're suggesting, Diverse TV, and I would agree. Let's go with Wanda Sykes. Wanda I think Sykes. she could hold on the four. Okay. She could. Do you even know who Aisha Tyler is? I had to look her up after you told me about her yesterday. She's on the talk. She's been around for years. I I love that lady. 
<laughs> Anyways, you know, but and I don't mean to be mean to Chelsea. She's got lots of money. She doesn't care what I say about her. But I do think she's too she's too volatile to be putting to giving that show to. So that's my. Be interesting to see how it plays out. Nonetheless, Letterman's gone after all this time. Kind of sad. And uh, yeah, no, that's it. So yeah, follow us on LGBTSR as well. Like you said, Raina's gonna do that. I got to throw in what you're saying. I wasn't scene stealing, Mark. What I was doing was giving you a gift of someone else. And in reference to what Mark was referring to, Mark and Frank, the wedding they were going to do that we weren't able to attend because they did the right thing and got married in, in a New York 24-hour period and then had the party. They always wanted Raina, one of uh, Frank's former artists from his label, to sing for them. And we were on the side talking, and Raina said we were talking about the story. And so we just surprised you with a little serenade, and I thought she sounded great. Oh, no, I loved it that you did that. I was really happy to have her. What I mean is that it's just your personality. You're extremely outgoing, and you're like – your crowd, you know, people in crowds love you and all this stuff. I'm not in the least bit jealous because I think to some extent I'm the same way. But you're um, you're just a superstar, I, you know, and you can't help that. Well, I don't know. I just think she's a superstar. And I was, it, it made me so warm to my heart to see her sing to you guys because uh, it was a special day. Enough said. Thank you guys so much for hosting us. We had a wonderful time. Absolutely. And everybody, it's been another our, our 14th Cafe B. We'll be back in a couple of weeks because we're going to um, next weekend. We're at the house and we're going to the poker. We, oh, we could do Friday, Good Friday, but we'll talk about that. So, anyways, everybody, have a, it's fabulous weather. Get out, enjoy it, Jesse. It was so good to see you again. Please come back. Oh, I'm trying to find him in the room. There, there he is. Okay. Oh wow, wow. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark. Bye, see you, everybody. Grab a scone.